Hey everyone, this is Bethany Teal. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating and reviewing how to use soft pastels. I'll go over some basic tips and techniques as well as information about this material and papers to use. And I'll let you watch me create a painting from start to finish using soft pastels. The product I'm using here is the 48 color set of soft pastels from Artex. And in the description of this video, I will link information on how to purchase this set. I really think this is a nice beginner set with many color options and these pastels are very blendable and easy to use. So really a great option. I'm very pleased to be able to share them with you all today. Now I'd like to get started by just explaining what soft pastels are. Soft pastels really are just powdered pigments mixed with a binder to hold it together. These binders are things like gum arabic or menthol cellulose and the hardness or softness of the pastels depends on how much binder is used. Softer pastels will deposit color more easily onto the paper, but harder pastels are more sturdy and good for sketching. Either way, once the binder and the pigments are mixed, they are formed into shapes like the cylinders you see here, and they can be formed by hand or by machine. Now, sometimes I do notice on various brands of pastels that there can be a bit of a film coating the edge, and when you first use a pastel that has never been used before, you might need to run the edge over a piece of sandpaper or a piece of paper towel just to remove a bit of that coating. Now to blend your soft pastels, you can obviously use the most convenient tool of all, which is a finger, or you could use something like a piece of paper or a tissue. I really like to layer color as much as possible and I try not to over blend because I find that the more I blend soft pastels, the more the color kind of gets dingy and muddy and less vibrant. So to achieve the most vibrant colors possible, I try to pat the paper when I blend to push the color into the texture of the paper, but to not mix it up too much. Other tools you might want to consider using for blending are a Q-tip, which can provide a lot of accuracy, or even a paper stump typically used for blending with charcoal. Eyeshadow applicators are also great tools for blending soft pastels and are available in most drugstores. I personally like using my fingers for blending best, even though I realize that it is not recommended to have any oils get onto the paper. So I do try to have very clean hands when beginning a drawing. No matter which method you use for blending, soft pastels will make a bit of a mess on your fingers, so just have a rag handy so that you can keep your fingers clean. Now in terms of paper, I prefer using the Mitons paper by Canson. This paper comes in a variety of colors. It also has two sides which vary in the amount of texture. It is important to find a paper that has a good amount of texture so that the soft pastels have crevices to be caught into. So if you can't get your hands on pastel paper, watercolor paper is another good option. In terms of mark making with your soft pastels, you can use your pastel on its side, as I just was demonstrating, to create heavy weighted lines. And you can vary the amount of pressure you put on your soft pastels to let more or less of the texture of the paper show through for your layers. Make sure to keep your pastels clean and clean them off with your rag between uses so that you don't deposit color unnecessarily. Try using different sides of your pastel for medium and thin weighted lines, as well as stippling or using dots to create different color blends. Now that we've gone over the basics, I'm going to walk you through how I would start a painting using soft pastels. I like to work from high quality photographs whenever possible. So for this painting, I'm going to be using a photograph taken by a friend of mine, Cham Bin. 
I chose a gray toned Mitons paper and I lightly sketched out the drawing first and then used some blue painter's tape to tape down the edges of the paper. This is so that I'll have a nice clean border when I'm finished. I actually taped my paper down to a movable surface and this will allow me to dust off the paper whenever I want to so I can lift it up from the table. As you can see, I'm beginning with the background using the widest side of the pastels and placing the colors in layers to create the beautiful bouquet blur that we see in the photograph. I want to create a nice gradual blend in the background first and have that area be more or less complete before I start working on the area of focus, which is clearly the pink flowers. For the remainder of this video, I'm going to let you just watch me progress through this painting with soft pastels. You'll notice that I go back and forth between layering, blending with my fingers, layering on some more colors, and then blending again. When I want more pigment to be deposited onto the paper, I'll both increase the pressure that I'm applying with my hand, and I'll use the end of the pastel instead of the wide area. When blending with my fingers, I'll have to pay attention to which finger is blending in which area so that I don't contaminate other colors. And sometimes I will use more than one finger to blend in a larger space or just one smaller finger like a pinky in a more confined area. To begin the flowers, I started with white so that I was able to more clearly see the marks that I was making to define those petals that are in clear focus in the photograph I'm using as a reference. However, while I want my painting to resemble the photograph, I don't need everything to be exactly the same. So at a certain point, I do want to focus just on my work of art and making that stand alone. I try to look at the photo to see colors that I might want to add in to add more vibrancy to my image. I'll squint my eye when looking at the photograph and really try to pick out colors that I might not have expected wanting to use. For instance, in the petals themselves, I used a lot of orange and red, and in the leaves down at the bottom, I actually used a lot of purple as well as browns and greens. When my painting has met my expectation, I take off the painter's tape, which is so satisfying to give my painting a beautiful clean border. And of course, I sign my work in that space that is remaining in that border. I hope this video has helped you see not only how to use soft pastels but also give you a starting point for a brand you might want to try using to begin with. Again, this set of Artex soft pastels was an excellent beginner set and I would highly recommend them. Again, check out the link in the description of this video for links on how to purchase these pastels for yourself. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye!